Microsoft Loops are a fast new way to collaborate on lists, ideas, and take notes. They can be created from a Microsoft Teams chat. Later this year, we'll be able to create loops from Teams channel conversations and other loop-aware apps. There will be a lot of loop content created. Also later this year, we'll have the Microsoft Loop app released, which will help us to organize the loop content into workspaces. But there is another way to find and manage and work with loop content available today. It's on the office.com homepage. Let's take a look. When you go to office.com today, you're going to be greeted with a, a new way of viewing all kinds of content, but I'm going to focus on loops today. Um, so on the home page, we see a quick access view and uh, recent content that I've been working on. You can see all the loops uh, based on the fluid tile or fluid uh, icon. Um, I can, from the all view, I can see uh, everything there. I can also just quickly filter down to see recently opened and worked with content. Um, I can view things in terms of what's been shared. So I have shared content and content has been shared with me um, and I can see my loops in there. Uh, but what I'd like to be able to do is just focus on loop content only. So I'm going to use the plus button to add a new filter and I'm going to choose the content type loop components. Now, in truth, these are not just components. When we create a, a loop component in a Teams chat, we're also creating a loop page. So I would have just called these loops or loop pages, but it's called loop components so people can recognize it. You can already see that it's filtered all the content so that I'm just seeing loop components. And it's highlighted there as a new view. Um, if I wanted to see um, an order of activity, I can see what kind of content is being edited, shared within a Teams chat, recently opened. You can see those sorts of things. Now, the other way that I can work with loop content and find it is I can go into my My Content view. Unfortunately, we don't see the same view that I just set up, filtering out just the loop content. But over here in the filter, I can drop down and just filter out and show only the loop components. So that gives the same effect, it's just that it doesn't remain. Now from within here, I've also got other ways to view the loop content. Perhaps um, I know and can recall that I was working on a loop with Laura. So I might browse by people and I can find the two loops that have been shared and collaborated with uh, from Laura. Um, so that's a plan for a Christmas party and some December uh, content for the YouTube channel. I might also recall that uh, it was a meeting that I was uh, attending and that a loop was shared there. And so you can see that in this stand-up meeting that a, uh, another loop was shared and we worked on that together during the meeting. So within all of these spaces that I can um, see and filter and show loop content, I'm just going to go back to my home view here and we'll filter just down on loop content. And we'll have a look at some of the actions that we can take when we've found the, the loop content. So as we travel along and use the ellipsis or the more menu, three dots, we've got a few ways that we can take action on the content. We can open it, which clearly we could do that if we just clicked on the, the link or the loop within the list. Um, we've also got something handy here, which is open file content. And so um, if I was just to open this loop, it is going to open up in office.com, and this is our full page view of how we work with loops. Um, it's quite handy to use within a Teams meeting scenario where maybe the space that we see within chat is a little too small over there on that right-hand side, so we can open up that full page and collaborate this way. Um, so I can just go back to the home view, and what does it mean when I can open in the location? Well, this is a loop that was created by Laura, and if I go and choose the open file location, then that's going to take me through to Laura's OneDrive and her Microsoft Teams chat files, which is where a loop is stored by default when it is added to a Teams private chat or private meeting. So I can see here all the loops that have been shared with me. Now, Laura might have other loops that she has created, and they'll be also stored in the Teams chat files, but I only see the loops that are shared with me. So I can see some that have been shared directly with me and uh, some that have also been shared with groups such as within a meeting or maybe a group private chat. Um, so that's quite useful. Now let's go back over to what else can we do with a loop from this menu. 
um, we can also share the loop. Now, I just want to point a few things out here. Uh, we can do this with all files. We can do this, of course, with a loop and share a link. Uh, we'll start off by going to the email option. So what this will do is it will show that typical share or send a link dialog box, and we can drop a person's email address in there. Uh, and it's going to create a link based on the permissions that we have set at the top here. By default in my organization, I'm uh, sharing it with all people in, and it's not Microsoft, a little bit buggy there. It's actually um, all people within my tenant. Uh, so that's what you should see there. Um, and if I just drop a name and it's going to send an email, we know what that looks like. So that's fine. I won't have to go into that. Uh, what about when we choose the Teams option? So this is an interesting option. It is popping up a dialog box that allows me to sign in, which it's signed in anyway, because I am signed into office.com. Uh, and I can choose, let's say, a recent location that I've been in. So I have been in a group chat called Q4 content planning. I could choose a channel and a team that I might have visited recently too, or um, this meeting here that I had with John. Um, so when I do share that, let's just choose that as a recent location. It's creating the link for me, um, and that's fine. I've got the permissions down here that it's sharing with everyone in my tenant, and I can say that um, this is the loop you were looking for, and share that. What we find when we share uh, using this method, whether we're emailing it or even the other option that we're going to look at shortly too, copying the link, um, is that it doesn't actually come through as an embedded loop. So this is something that we expect to see. Here we go. We expect to see that uh, as a fuller, more consistent experience later on in the year. But for now, some of these links that we copy over aren't necessarily coming through and detected as loop links. The only experience we see that is if we copy the link from an embedded loop and we go over to another location, I can do the same thing here, paste it in here, and it has some kind of properties that allow it to still embed within a Teams chat. But that's fine, it still gets people through to the location of where that loop is. If I was to click on the link in, in Teams uh, where I shared it, or um, someone else who may have uh, received that link too, that it is going to open the loop in the office.com uh, site so we can work with the loop. So the other last one there in terms of sharing it is copy link. Um, so if we go into share and copy link, we're going to see the same dialog box that we see within uh, sending it via email. We can get to change those permissions um, and we can then copy that link and paste it into another application. The last thing that I want to investigate with you is another action here to add to to do or to calendar. So let's say that we're going to set aside some time, maybe it's a task, or we're actually going to schedule some time to work on the loop and the content within it. Perhaps it's a follow-up after a meeting and we want to try and gather and collate some of the notes that have been pulled together and tidy up the loop, for example. Um, so to begin with, maybe we'll set that as a task. We'll just add that to to-do. Now that gets added to to-do. We don't get an option in terms of what's going to happen. But if we open up uh, we'll see that as a task added to just my to-do list. Um, it's not giving me any option about where to put that and what list to add it to. But this is enough. We can move it around if we need to. And you can see from uh, the list there that I could open the loop in Fluid. And again, it's going to open up the, the full loop in that page. Great. So the last one that we'll have a look at is also adding to our calendar where we're trying to be a bit more deliberate about the time we'll spend on a task uh, rather than just adding it to our list, uh, then I might set aside uh, an hour to work on that. And um, you can see the link is right there in the, um, in the meeting appointments or potentially the invite if we are working on it together uh, with other people in our team. Uh, not the same as adding it to a, a meeting chat. Uh, so I would have to add the Teams meeting details and then after I've sent the meeting invite, then I could uh, just copy the link and then paste it into the Teams chat for the meeting so that it is embedded. But at least this way, I'm setting aside time for me to work on that loop and potentially um, inviting other people to do the same with me. 
So this is a good way to work and find uh, our loop content at the moment, while we don't have the full loop application, um, a good way to you know just zero in on just the loop content with that filter, uh, and we can see uh, running activity list there of uh, what sort of activities have been taken um, in in recent times with all the loop content. We can see uh, when things were edited, uh, when they were shared, if they were recently opened, and uh, as we've seen from the my content view, uh, that we could zero it down and find loops based on people, meetings, and other locations. So uh, keep on this journey with me as we look at Microsoft Loop as it begins to roll out uh, and starts to reveal itself in terms of what it's capable of doing. We're looking forward to seeing more of Microsoft Loop revealed in the Teams experience and across other Loop-aware applications. Uh, if you're keen to see more of this content, then check out some of the details in the description for this video. I've got a course um, that I'm building that's for free at the moment, and we're just building it based on what we're discovering and learning about Loop uh, as part of this journey. There's also a LinkedIn user group and um, also uh, some other content around that too. So check out those links in the description. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.